Hello, this is Daniel speaking here and I will welcome you to the last exercise of our course today. We have learned so far to use methods to calculate the state values or even the values for the actions we can take in a state. And based on that learned values we selected the actions. But today we will directly try to train the policy. That's why the exercise today is called policy gradients. So in contrast to apply the function approximator to estimate the values of the different states or actions directly, um, we will today use a function approximator to directly choose the action. This enables us to work also on a continuous action space like we will see in the following. As environment we will take today the Lunar Lander continuous environment from OpenAI Gym. Mm, to make it run please be sure that you've installed that box 2D like mentioned in the comment here. So our task today, we can see in this GIF here, is to land that uh, pink, violet, whatever lander here in the landing zone marked by that yellow two markers here. And an accident free, so safe landing in that case, uh, is meant here like you can read in the text below that both of the legs come in contact with the ground while um, the lander has a moderate velocity. The reward is mainly defined depending on whether the uh, landing process is successful or the lander crashes which gives a positive or a negative reward respectively. In addition, we got a small and negative reward for firing the main engine. The main engine you can uh, see by the red dots here below the lander and the side engines on the right and on the left are also marked by that red dots. Today we deal with a continuous state and action space and the states and actions are defined as written below here. So the state is depending on the position, the velocity, uh, the angle of the uh, lander itself and the angular velocity and the boolean down here which uh, detects if one of the right and left leg has contact to the ground or not. The action also continues and splits into two. So um, the first one concerns to the main engine and if in a, in a range till negative values of minus one from zero on the engine is turned off and from zero on till one we've got at least a mapping of 50% to 100% of the available power. Similar it works for the side engine for the second action, um, but in the negative range from minus 0.5 to minus 1, we apply the amount of mapping power to the right engine and in the positive area then to the left engine. The next cells can be used to import all the libraries we need and to apply the um, environment once and define it. And in our first task, like here, um, we should write a reinforce algorithm. As featureizer, we use uh, again the RBF sampler we've got to know in the last exercise. It was already defined and could be fitted using this cell here. If we have a look into the algorithm 12.1 from lecture I've shown here, um, we can read that we first need a differentiable policy 
function. And in that case, we will again use an artificial neural network. Um, we can define here using that function create policy. So first we've defined an input layer as the dimension of the input which is connected here to the first hidden layer. Um, the first hidden layer is then here connected to two other hidden layers. So we've got one hidden layer called hidden to mu and one hidden layer called hidden to sigma which are both connected to the first hidden layer and um, each of these layers are connected to one output layer respectively. So we get an input to our network here uh, of the input dimension which is depending on the state. So we give a state as an input to our network um, as written here as an X. We've got the weights of the network we call theta and we've got two different outputs of the network called mu and sigma which uh, we defined as the um, mean value and the standard deviation um, of a Gaussian distribution we will explain in the following. Inside the definition we here have used a clip by value function to um, Clip the output of the mu layer to from plus to minus one. Like we've learned in lecture for continuous action space, a typical policy function is Gaussian normal distribution. And this mu here out of our network is then the average value for the normal distribution we have defined here by p in the text above. The second output called sigma is um, in that case here the covariance matrix um, for the Gaussian distribution multidimensional in our case. And if you have a look into the code here, um, we also have used a clip by value function here to um, clip that sigma that it won't get too low. Low sigma would mean a, a really um, tiny a normal distribution so we've got a small standard deviation and we are sure that our mean value is the correct one and if we would let run this sigma here to zero we would get some numerical issues due to in the formula uh, we have to invert that sigma and inverting a zero would cause numerical issues Additionally, uh, we have used some scaling here because we recognized during training that uh, the main engine is used quite more often than the uh, side engines and took a long time to learn to use the side engines. That why, uh, that's why we have scaled the standard deviation for the side engines engines a little bit higher to learn faster. So our policy network here estimates the uh, for a, in a given state the average of the standard deviation so the average action we should take um, some kind of additionally noised by a standard deviation or covariance matrix here called um, sigma. So our task is now like we've learned in lecture that we um, adapt the weights of 
the network in that case that um, we maximize in the end the reward. To do so we need the policy gradient and like we have learned in lecture we can um, calculate that policy gradient due to that formula you can see on that slide here. So we will change our theta into, that, uh, into a direction that the expectation for the policy of that Q here increases. And in our first algorithm we use for Q like we've learned in Monte Carlo several times simply the return um, after one episode. So in the end like we learned here on slide before we will change our weights a little bit into the direction that this is maximized. Um, therefore we need the gradient of that pi here we've taken as mm, multidimensional Gaussian distribution here divided again by pi. This is equivalent uh, to the gradient of the logarithm of that pi here. That's why in our case we will still have to calculate the gradient of the natural logarithm of pi. For our weights of the network we've used here also clip by value and norm by value uh, is a regularization. This you can interpret like a down scaling uh, which will prevent us for di from divergency. And in the end you see the log likelihood Gaussian which output here is the um, natural logarithm of our policy pi as Gaussian distribution. Due to this is needed inside of our derivative um, we have to define here the inputs as tensor flows and not as numpy. So um, the next cell we have a template for the reinforce algorithm which is stated here. In this template we already provided to you that you should use here the atom optimizer which is um, simply uh, an enhanced uh, stochastic gradient ascent algorithm to estimate the um, policy gradient here. For more information you can uh, have a look at the paper of the developers. So let's have a brief look through the important parts of the code here. Um, inside this loop here we generate the episode and we take our action from uh, the multivariate normal distribution here and as input we take as uh, mean the mu we got out of our policy network and the covariance matrix uh, the called sigma here also out of our policy network and for each action to take using that mu and sigma in that step here we st uh, store that log likelihood Gaussian and if you remember out of this we got the natural logarithm of our policy for that action in that state using that um, parameter vector. And like typically for Monte Carlo after an episode is terminated we start the learning process. We first calculate the return. The return in our case is the um, expectation value of that Q we discussed. We know from lecture. So like in the algorithm here we take the um, 
g as a return and um, then we simply have to apply the gradients here as a loss function like we've defined here we take that uh, natural logarithm of pi so um, we define here our loss function as um, that props log we have saved from above here and we have to take into account that g here already to use the function apply gradients here below that negative sign before the tf squeeze here in that case is due to that apply gradients uses uh, gradient descent and we want to uh, maximize our return so we have a gradient ascent that's why we have to invert our loss in this case so let's have a look at the results after learning due to excessive hardware use we've run the simulation here on a different machine and it should be noticed that depending on your hardware you're running the code on you uh, could take a a lot of time um, till you got some results or even there is a uh, possibility uh, depending on how you coded it that it could run out of memory so to work in parallel i haven't used my laptop here but a machine in the university and we see the results here so uh, the return is plotted and a moving average return for every 250 episodes and we can see here that reinforce starts somehow learning something depending I think on the initial um, weights of the network uh, you get better or even worse results than this but for example if you compare here with the, the result after 3,500 episodes, you can uh, see an increasing tendency here. And in my case here, after uh, nearly 5,000 episodes, you can see that we have an increase in the average um, reward here, but reinforced seems so that it hasn't solved the problem yet at all. In the end, we have prepared also here a cell where you can choose uh, between deterministic or stochastic execution. The difference is that in this case here, we will take directly the average we have taken for our Gaussian distribution as action for the main and the side engine and in case of stochastic execution we um, take the mean value again as mean value for the Gaussian distribution and take the covariance matrix sigma into account. So let's first have a look at the deterministic execution here and yeah okay maybe a little bit better than the initial performance without learning but uh, I think um, the task isn't solved at all in this case here. And now we change the execution to stochastic execution and we see that the results look better but the whole task isn't solved at all but it seems so that using um, the stochastic part here um, the solution is better in that case but not the best at all so increasing the performance could work using more learning steps or even other algorithms we've learned in lecture we will see in the following so we've seen that uh, the classical reinforce algorithm based on Monte Carlo isn't the best choice. In lecture we've learned to use some baseline as next where we 
add some um, term to uh, the gradient policy to reduce some variance effects. This results then in a reinforce algorithm with baseline where we've used as baseline function the state value function. The difference uh, we have learned is advantage function we can interpret in a way that it's a difference of taking an arbitrary action and following from then on the policy pi compared to the state value if we directly would have followed the policy pi. And depending on that we will update our weights. So now in case of taking Monte Carlo which stands for as we have seen a slow learning um, we have got to know an other algorithm lecture called actor critic and there we have defined an additional um, function approximator to estimate that state value for the advantage function so in instead of waiting till the end of the episode, we then estimate our state value function for the current and the next state and can use here the TD error as advantage function. So we need two uh, artificial neural network one to um, approximate the policy and one to estimate the state value functions like we can see here. This we already prepared in the cell here. We've first defined a critic or a function to define the critic using that sequential we already know from last exercises. In this case we've used a different scaling so we simply take out all the weights and um, scale them by hand by a factor to show you another alternative. Next we define an actor the same or a similar way we have done in the first exercise and uh, use a similar regularization. Please have a look in detail through the definition here. And on the next cell we can have a look at the solution of our actor critic algorithm. So what's interesting in here we again take the action from the normal distribution for a step here and then we calculate the next step state and um, using the current and the next state using our critic here we calculate or estimate the uh, state values for the current and for the next state depending on if the next state is terminal or not we calculate our delta here as advantage function using the revolt and gamma times the next value minus the current value here. This time we haven't used the apply gradients function so our loss for the critic due to the, um, the algorithm is simply the value of the current state and the um, loss function for the actor is again the log likelihood Gaussian we already had above. Next here we calculate the gradients uh, concerning that loss for critic and actor for the trainable variables so the uh, weights of the neurons by ourself. And in the end we update the weights of the network. We get them by hand here, update here the um, weights for the critic concerning the function so plus alpha times delta times the gradients here and the same goes for theta um, here with alpha times i which is defined above here and 
iterated times delta times the gradient of the actor. So when if we here have a look at the learning curve, we can see that actor critic in that case works more, seems to work much better than the reinforce algorithm and even much faster as you can see here even after about yeah 900,000 episodes on average we get uh, oh no faster after 400 episodes we got a positive return in average and yeah the problem seems to be solved so let's now first have a look onto the stochastic execution comparison to reinforce and we can see here that it seems to actor critics solve the problem quite well and here we see the result for deterministic execution and also in this case the problem seems solvable by actor critic after that less than 2000 episodes maybe not all the time like we see just right here but um here yeah, more learning steps i think should solve the problem in that case totally yeah, all right, so this is it for today and this is our last exercise. So thank you for listening all the time. Wish you good luck for the exam and yeah, hopefully see you soon. Bye.